As some states begin to reopen their economies, in spite of experts warning that it's far too early, people who live in those states are beginning, beginning to question, you know, how they're going to stay safe. Last week, activists from indivisible chapters in Texas, Florida, and Arizona laid body bags outside state houses and a governor's mansion to protest these plans to reopen businesses. Today, we have two organizers of these actions, Charlie Scherenberger of Arizona and Trish Contreras of Texas. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you for Charlie's an activist with Indivis Indivisible in Phoenix. She held a long, satisfying career at a certified, as a certified safety professional and certified medical laser safety officer for hospitals, clinics, and research, where she prepared and practiced for pandemic disasters. She prepared the plan, so you are a good person to ask a whole bunch of questions, even outside of just protest questions. Um, Tris Contreras, activist and board member of Indivisible in Austin, Texas. She worked in the community health services sector for over 20 years. She's the mother of an 18 year old daughter who attends college but had to come home due to the virus. Trish has pre existing conditions. Her mother is an essential worker and her father has stage four cancer. So, you know, the thank you for being here with us today. The virus is not something that's happening out there this is something that's 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 right you know at the forefront of your lives could you guys um we can start with you trish can you talk about the action you were involved in uh and what happened and who were you targeting well for yes we were uh, essentially targeting uh governor abbott uh and both our senators senator uh, ted cruz and senator john cornyn how can we get uh, rid of that guy? Sorry, Ted Cruz. Yeah, we, yeah. National school we are trying. We are trying. <laughs> um, and yes, um, and so we wanted to send out a message um, letting them know, uh, letting Gregory Abbott know that we needed and still need uh, all widespread testing uh, in our state uh, now that he has reopened. Um, there's just measures and that are not being taken um, and we wanted to send a message using the body bags to represent the number of deaths that we've already had in Texas um, and obviously the fact that um, people are contracting this virus very very quickly so just to put things into perspective um, we last week which was seven days ago we had 37,000 cases in Texas, um, and we had over 1,000 deaths. Seven days later, which is today, uh, we are now close to uh, 48,000. That's 6,000 more in just one week. And now our deaths are more than 1,300, which again is 300 that have already passed from even seven days ago when we had our, our, our protests. And Sherry, excuse me, Shirley, could you give us an update on what is uh, happening in your state? Um, it's very similar to Texas. We're, we're seeing increases both in the number of cases and in the uh, number of deaths. One of the anomalies in Arizona is that our governor, uh, Republican Governor Doug Ducey, um, has decided that some of the uh, some of the numbers don't matter. And um, he's eliminated any of the tribes. Um, we have a lot of Native Americans in Arizona. Um, and so he's just eliminated that. They've had over a thousand deaths now. Oh, wow. So he doesn't even count the tribe. He's, not, he's excluding those. They don't matter. From the numbers. Wow. And I think he's he was for a while excluding nursing homes and prisons as well, because he was getting a lot of heat for that and still is. You're seeing on the screen, if you're watching on either Facebook, on Twitch, I'm showing on the screen, uh, I believe it's you, Trish, talking into the megaphone? Yes, ma'am, yes, it is. Very great, yes. it's wonderful. I'm not showing, they're not getting the sound, but they're getting you know, the images of uh, the body bags. Can you talk about, uh, just talk about the action and, and why the body bags, why, why did you decide as a group to do it this way? And what was the response? I can see that the police are there going through the body bags. I'm assuming 
you know, to make sure it's not explosives or actual dead people. Yes, Talk sir. about why this way and what was the response? Oh, my. Uh, uh, well, uh, we wanted to, to uh, make sure that he understood, number one, that the body bags, again, represented the people that have already passed and those that are still going to, because we know, again, the increase in the numbers. Uh, but we wanted to also remind him that these numbers are not you know, they're not just numbers. These are real human beings dying. These are uh, uh, folks that have family that right now are, are suffering because of their loss. Um, and so we wanted to remind him that these are people, these are souls, these are family members, these are I mothers and fathers. We continue to complain of, on this show about how we don't see the victims on, of this pandemic on any news channel almost ever. Yes, I know. I know. And so I mean, every single day, if you ask me, uh, yeah. yes, people are dying every day, every Why? day, every day. And so in order for us to, you know, we can, we can make speeches, we can, you know, send out letters and we can do all the things that we feel that are necessary in order to bring light to, to the facts. Right. So, but again, as you said, you know, we're not, we're not, we're not looking at these, souls as 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 people we are you know they tend at least you know in this case governor abbott talks about the you know the, the number of deaths but he just says the number without one talking about the victims you know talking about uh what they contributed as as human beings uh and it just becomes a number and not again not the person not the families and so <laughs> Charlie, what was the response uh, in Texas? Were you able to get any media at either of your events? And, oh, oh uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. In Arizona, we had, um, oh, I think there were four news stations and two um, newspapers. And then we had our um, Indivisible sent their own videographer who also um, put things out there. Um, it yes, was, we're playing some of the video now, in fact. Yes, <laughs> it's awesome. And they, um, they were picked up quite a bit. I was, I, well, I woke up the next day to a bunch of, of uh, text messages from friends I haven't talked to in five years and <laughs> telling me I was in the paper. So <laughs> that's great. Did, was there a warning? Did you have to tell the state house and the police that you were coming in New York City? You got to tell people you're coming. Otherwise, it's a disaster. You know, we didn't. Um, I know that. Hey, that's even we better. Showed. Surprise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We showed up and we put it all down there and we did our thing and we left. We were there 55 minutes. <laughs> mm -hmm. So not a, not a whole hour. Yeah. And, and you, no one was armed, I'm assuming, like the armed protests for reopening? No, and that's partly why we, we planned it to be so small. I mean, the real reason was that not many people should be out. And so we didn't want to set a bad example. There were um, 10 of us and we were, you know, all in masks and gloves and we were separated on the, you can see that in the video, we didn't stand by each other. Um, and then the, uh, <laughs> the other reason we were small was because we really wanted to be um, very mobile and be able to just get out of there if the other, the other people showed up, the people that are um, pro opening, we would just get out of there and leave. Can you talk about, well, that's smart. They're always somehow know about things. I don't know. How do they do that? How do they figure out what we're going to do? We didn't talk about it. We didn't put it on our social media. We uh, didn't, I mean, when we did talk to each other, it was kind of a sh sh thing, you know? <laughs> yeah, sure. Sure. Can you talk about the group Indivisible and what you are working on? Oh, gosh, we, my, my most people don't know what it is. It's my possible. particular chapter is um, we're very uh, action oriented, I guess. And we've been uh, protesting every week on Tuesday in front of the senator's offices. It used to be Jeff Flake yeah. and, um, and Senator McCain. And now yes, we have um, some good news on that front. I noticed that perhaps we're getting rid of McCain in order to get um, Kelly. That would, uh, oh, I mean, yeah, McCain. McSally, McSally. She came in after, after McCain died and uh, she was appointed, not elected. Yes. 
And we remind her of that every day. <laughs> it looks like Kelly might win. He's ahead by 53. 53, it's 53 to 38. I just saw yeah. a report. We're very yeah. excited he's about an that. Amazing candidate. And he will be, he's a moderate and he will be very good for Arizona. Um, he's just awesome. People need to elect him. How many, um, how many seats do we need to take back the whole Senate? Do you know? I seem to have four. Okay. So this is a good one. We were counting on you. Yep. <laughs> we are. <laughs> Great. So that's part of our effort. And then when the um, when the pandemic came, we were forced off the street. Um, so doing this act at the Capitol last week was um, it was a stretch for us, and we were a little bit afraid to go out for many reasons. And uh, but we did it anyway because this is so important. It's like right. Trish said; these are lives, and we have to get the message out there. We need to try to convince people that wearing their PPE isn't that bad, um, that they can certainly do it for um, somebody else, for somebody's grandmother, you know, I mean, they can't just walk away from it. I have the most beautiful mask. <laughs> do you have it? Can you show it? We'd love yeah, to see. I'm wearing it. <laughs> oh, it's perfect. Yeah. Look, it matches your hair. I love it. <laughs> it fits well, really well too. And it's, I don't really wear it for myself. I am kind of high risk. I'm old enough and I have some chronic illnesses, but um, I, I wear it for others. You know, I wear it for my husband who's a diabetic and has heart problems and I wear it for others. We should make masks saying, I wear this for others. For you. Yeah. I wear this for you. Yeah. I wear this for you. Where's yeah. yours? <laughs> How about that? Yeah, a little shame mask I could put, put together. <laughs> Except Charlie, you've been involved that way. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie, you've been involved in pandemic disaster plans for years. Uh -huh. um, can you talk from that perspective about how bad it is to open up the economy right now? Oh. Well, we never dreamed that it would actually come to this point. I mean, in all of our planning and all of our creation of bad scenarios, you know, which you, you do when you're planning and practicing. Uh, we never dreamed we would have someone in a leadership role that, that wouldn't release the stockpiles to the states. I mean, there, there were niches of, of equipment and supplies located all over the country and, and that they wouldn't open those up for the states and get them delivered promptly um, in the exercises they always did. So, I mean, those, those are uh, top secret locations, but they, but they get them there. So, so it's we, not impossible. It wasn't just what they're leading us to believe like, oh, well, we didn't see this coming and we didn't yeah. know and we couldn't possibly have been prepared. Your whole job was preparing. Yes. And practicing. Oh, so yeah. we can blame yeah. President Trump for this. Oh, I, absolutely. <laughs> just making sure that's out there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> Rich, you, and this issue is so important to you, as it is to many of us, but because you have yourself have pre-existing conditions and both yeah. your parents are in high-risk populations, absolutely. what does it feel like for you to live in a state whose economy is opening back up? It's, it's heartbreaking. It is. It is. It's heartbreaking. Um, obviously, this is very, very personal to me. Uh, you know, my mom is an essential worker um, and... Um, I literally have to call her like every day at four o'clock in the morning when she's ready to go to go to work. And the first question that I ask her is, are you feeling okay? Um, and it's a worry, uh, so worrisome. And obviously my father who, who does um, have cancer and even as simply as going to an appointment with him to the doctor has been obviously challenging. Most of the time it's over video, uh, but he has had to go in uh, a couple of times since you know the 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 since this COVID uh, nineteen hit hit our country, but um, it 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 just becomes something that you look around like here in Texas and you see folks out and you see some folks wearing masks and others are not, and obviously you get frustrated. Um, you want to you know hand out yourself. You know you want to go around and hand out masks to these folks. Uh, well, but, I, I'm going to guess they're not 
not wearing them because they don't have them. <laughs> you can no, make one out of a sock. You, uh, yes, you can. <laughs> so there are no excuses, absolutely. Uh, but again, it's, it's really frustrating to see that. Yeah, um, while at the same time, you see folks that are wearing masks and you think about what it is that they're probably going through as well, trying to be careful, trying to uh, you know, follow the rules, you know, rules that obviously our own governor and our own senators don't follow. Uh, which is, again, it, it's a bad example. And as Charlie said, uh, you know, even with our action ourselves, uh, we, we were real careful. You know, we were, we were wearing protective uh, 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 gear. And so it, it just, you see the numbers again, I go back to the numbers over and over again, because it's, it's just, they're, they're um, uh, putting up a, a false uh, uh, status quo, right? Yeah, they're putting up this, 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 uh, uh, gosh, I, I just, they're putting out the wrong perception, you know, folks get relaxed, um, again, because they're not wearing masks, and, and then at, while at the same time, you have half of the other population in Texas, you know, just trying to do their best, you know, trying to do their best. Uh, can either of you speak to my grand hope that since your states are Republican leaning, red leaning, um, I know you're blueing up there in Texas there. We are. Uh, <laughs> we are. <laughs> the, the people are, are people starting to come to grips with the fact that this administration and the Republican Party that supports and condones and enables what this administration is doing is not a great idea for, you know, to continue? Are people maybe willing to, to vote blue in November? I'm beginning to believe so. And yeah. I'm... Yeah, I am I, I, with hope. <laughs> I mean, I try not to get too optimistic because we can't. We're no. There's no guarantee. We have to work hard. But um, there's some. There are some reports that like older people in these states that are opening up are like, "What? Forget <laughs> it. We're not voting for Trump." You know, it's. That's yeah, you see it. Good. Yeah, you see it here in Texas as well. I mean, uh, um, there. This state for sure is purple. I mean, there is no question about it. Uh, but as Charlie said, we do. We need to go out there and we need to do what we need to do in order to make sure that, you know, they are no longer um, harming our states, right? Because that's what they're doing, right, by their actions and non-actions. Um, but yeah, we're definitely a purple state. And so it's just up to us to make sure that it turns blue. We are speaking to two activists for the group Indivisible, Charlie Schartenberger, Schart, wait, I've got that wrong. <laughs> Is it Schaefer? I'm sorry about that. It's All right, I've been called a lot of things. <laughs> oh gosh. Um, okay. <laughs> she is in Phoenix, Arizona, and uh, we also have Trish, excuse me, Trish Contreras, who is in Indivisible in Austin, I do want to say that there are people in our Facebook chat, say, uh, chat saying uh, that you inspire them and people uh, thanking you in our Twitch stream. Thanks and inspiration is wonderful. How can people get involved in Indivisible? Oh, they can just Google or put in indivisible.org. I think, I think it's I .org. Think. Yep, I, it I, is. And just go for it. I mean, there's all sorts of ways to link to groups in their location, put in your zip code and um, see if they've got an event going or just see see who the leader is they can call. Or just start one if you have a little. Yes, yes, yes absolutely. Get going, yeah. people. Yeah. They'll, get the body, they'll get you the body bags so you can... Yeah, <laughs> you know, um, the Twitter handle for the Phoenix chapter is at PHX Indivisible. The Twitter handle for uh, the Indivisible in Austin is Indivisible ATX. Any final words you'd like to say to people who um, are out there and want to be active? Oh, I, I say do it. It's a tremendous stress reliever you'll be with people that have um, similar beliefs that you do um, and you'll be working together on something which is always therapeutic mm -hmm. and I, I just say please get involved it, it's good for you yeah 
Yeah, it's good. Yeah, absolutely. It's good for, for, for the individual and it's obviously good for for all of us at the end, right? We're all we all have progressive ideas. We all want to make sure that we are given uh, an opportunity to 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 speak up and to uh, make sure that others are available also to or have the opportunity to speak up as well. Just just, you know, again, like again, Shirley like said, Shirley go to our said, website, our website, just type in your type state, in state, it'll pop up all, you know, any individual any chapters that are out there, out there locally, locally and, and as, you know, and as you and said, as you uh, said uh, if not, if then not, start, start, one. start one, but you got to get involved. Get involved. We, we, have we, to, we have to, we have no have choice here. Choice do what we need to do. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us and thanks for the work that you did. It's a big deal what you did. The body bags are just such a visual, um, just a just a, a visual a, a very important visual that gives the message perfectly so thanks again for joining us and thanks for the work that you do thank, thank you, you.